Right, I've never been so confident I'm gonna love a whiskey as much as I feel about this one. So this is a red breast 30 year old, which I'm excited to try with uh, Cameron here. Um, Cameron, Irish whiskey, is this something you're a fan of? How do you, how do you? Yeah, I, I've got a real hidden soft spot for Irish <laughs> whiskey, to be honest. And I mm. tend to, if I'm off duty, drink more Irish whiskey okay. than Scotch whiskey. Is that just because of the, the character of it, the history uh, of it, everything? Absolutely. Softness, the gentleness, the, yeah. the approachability of it, mm. all things that I'm looking for in a whiskey. I share your confidence that mm. there's nothing I'm going to not love about this whiskey. Oh, yeah. 30 year old, red breast, Irish whiskey. Should be stunning. So, Irish whiskey is, is a category, actually, for most people watching, if you think of Irish whiskey, you think of Jimison or, you know, Bush Mills or whatever. What else is there to it other than those two massive brands? Well, the explosion of Irish distilleries mm. in terms of their their volume of them has yes. it, it, it's unprecedented. You yeah. know, there's up until a few years ago there was only four or five yeah, yeah. producers on, yeah, yeah. on Ireland, and now we're you know right up into the fifties, sixties, maybe even seventies. Yeah. It's having that sort of renaissance that Scotch had at the end of the eighteen hundreds. Mm. It's uh, absolutely amazing to see. And yeah, we get amazing liquid out of yeah. out of the cool. island so, as well. This one here, as I say, is from the Breadbreast brand, which is produced at Middleton, which is a fairly enormous facility that produces several different brands. Um Red Breast, is this one of your favourite Irish whiskies? Is it one you keep going yeah, it, back to? Yeah, it is actually. I love mm. Red Breast and I, um, I visited Cork in September. Mm. Okay. Where Middleton's just to, yes. to the yeah, east yeah. of Cork. Unfortunately, it was the day of the Queen's funeral, so oh, the distillery okay. was closed. Oh. So I couldn't even visit it. But um, it, it's a beautiful whiskey. Their 12 mm. year old is an absolute industry standard yeah. in terms of the quality that comes out of it. 15-year-old, yeah. a bit grubbier, a bit dirtier. It's often referred to as the bartender's favourite. Yeah. It's, it's a bit interesting. Then you get up into their age statements, the, the 21, just soft tropical juice that is beautiful, yeah. you know. As tastiness goes, it always ranks high. Red Breast 12 is a funny one. I think my my partner, she, she kind of likes whiskey, but doesn't really love whiskey. We, it was one day we went to two separate whiskey bars with two different friends and my partner said just get me something not too expensive but good yeah and then both friends got our red breast 12 yeah from this huge selection of 200 different whiskies both of them thought you know with those two criteria what ticks those boxes best yeah. red breast 12 is, it's the approachability of it yeah. you know like the the, the pot still style is yeah. something that in Scotland, we, we don't see, yeah, you know, but it's obviously very famous in Ireland mm. and then just drives a, a complete approachability mm. to the whiskey, nice and soft, nice and fruity usually, yeah. works really well with the cask, the, the sort of hand-selected casks that, yeah. that Red Breast pull out of that. Yeah, so this one here um, is a 30-year-old expression, it's called the Double Cask. Um, this is a combination of a ex-bourbon barrel and an Oloroso butt. So obviously given the size of those two vessels, I'd say a butt is what kind of twice the size of a barrel, you yeah. imagine it's going to have a fairly prominent um, sherry influence. Obviously matured for 30 years, you're expecting what, very mellow, quite kind of oaky, any other? You'd hope so, you'd hope that the, the, the wood, the oak would be sort of mm. integrated into the whiskey yeah, and there wouldn't be any so. sort of sharpness or any yeah. overpowering flavours, you know, after 30 years in a cask we're really, yeah, yeah. we're expecting that sort of roundness, that, that completeness yeah. In, yeah. A, in a whiskey. I have to say I'm very excited for this thing, my only slight fear is that it's kind of over Age, so it just tastes like wood and not much else. Um, but from I've tried one other cream cask and it was the most incredible nose I've ever experienced. It was stunning. Yeah. Um, so yeah, should we crack this open and see? Absolutely. See what it's like. Good luck with this. Yeah, fingers. Wax. Fingers crossed. Jeez. Actually, I'm hoping. Well, actually, there we go. Now we're in business. Daft not take note. <laughs> right. There we 
go. Right, let's see what this is all about. Cool. Right, Cameron, what do we have on the, I mean, colour? It's beautiful, Stairway, isn't it's, it? I mean, it, it looks delicious. Very yeah. inviting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah would say, very, very inviting. As you said, this is a combination of a Oloroso cask and a bourbon barrel. Seems there's a lot more of that, you know, typical cherry colour, if you like, Indeed. coming through in this one. Indeed. Um, on the nose, is it equally as sherry dominant or can we... Is there some of those more subtle bourbon flavours coming through? The sherry is the more prominent of the two, I would say, yeah. certainly. Yeah, it's got that sort of big richness that you would mm. associate with with sherry casks, yep. especially Oloroso casks. But I do think there's a, a lovely liveliness to it as well. Mm. Lovely sort of brightness. Yeah, it doesn't feel, or does it smell sort of dull or sort of one-dimensional, which you can sometimes get with very sherried whiskey. Yeah. There's that liveliness, that fruitiness, um, that sweetness as well. Yeah. I'm not sure whether that's coming from the style of whiskey or whether that mm. is coming from that edition of the bourbon cask. Potentially, yeah. But it's in there and it's a, yeah, it's a, a beautiful sort of complement to the richness of that mm. sherry. Yeah, for sure. The thing. Does it smell as inviting as, as you'd hoped? Uh, absolutely. I was thinking, well, without further ado, let's give us a try. Indeed. Slange. Slange. It's exactly what you want from a well-aged mm. Irish whiskey, isn't it? It's a lot fresher on the palate than you would assume yep. from the colour of it. Yeah. It's almost it's... pineapple cubes or cola cubes. So yeah, it's there is a lot going on. I feel it is. It's 56.9%, so it is quite strong. I feel with some whiskies you can barely taste it at that strength, which yeah. sounds silly. For this one, I, I am feeling it a little bit. Maybe because this is video number twenty-five of the day, potentially, <laughs> but yeah. it's yeah holding it, is, it together well. Yeah, there is. It has got a power to it. It has got a fair amount of strength, fair amount of oomph to it. But because there is so much coming from the cask, it isn't too imbalanced. I yeah, think. I think there's, it's there's so much. To I it. think it's beautiful, and th this is. This is what makes Irish whiskey mm. so attractive nowadays. Yeah. You know, like it's still that sort of emerging mm. brand in the luxury market. We, we yeah. spoke about Jameson's and Bushmills earlier yeah. and they're, they're names that are known all across the yeah. world. Yeah. But then, you know, we've got these 30 and older expressions right. from some of these distilleries and they're unrivaled. Yeah. yeah, so much going on. Do you feel Irish whiskey is almost held by, held back, sorry, by that almost connotation of being very smooth and simple and almost kind of one-dimensional and that's a good question i think it depends on the market to mm, be honest yeah. you know like some some markets across the globe will default to irish whiskey yeah. almost you yeah. know and then others will default to scotch or bourbon mm, yeah so i think it, certainly irish whiskey is expanding their market exploring yeah. new markets i can't wait to see what yeah. What happens the yeah, next few years? Time. I'm not sure, sure if it's still the case, but I think recently Irish whiskey was the fastest growing category yeah. of whiskey. So faster yeah. than Scotch, faster than, you know, English whiskey, Japanese whiskey, whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, a very exciting time. Yeah. Um, and you can see why with releases like that. Yeah. So. I think anybody who dismisses Irish whiskey is like oh, never match the complexity of a well aged Macallan or, you know, the depth of a yeah. Talisker or whatever. Yeah, give them, give them a try this, because this is full on. This has a lot of... Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a dense whiskey, I would say. Yeah, it's dense, it's rich, it's... But it's still got that sort of lovely liveliness as well, mm. and that, that almost freshness. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it's beautiful. Cola cubes and pineapple cubes in abundance. Yeah, so do you feel, after 30 years of maturation, it's... Do you think it's probably hit its peak? Do you think if they'd left it another five years, it'd become too over-oaked and it'd lose some of that liveliness? 
I, I think as it's presented just now is mm. as close to perfect as yeah. these two okay. casks are going to get. Yeah. You know, okay. and I'm I'm no expert in maturation, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I think this this presentation of it at thirty years old is a really round number. It's a beautiful number yeah. and it's it's a beautiful taste in liquid yeah. as well. No, it's a stunning whiskey and it's a great yeah, privilege to be able to, to try it. So, Absolutely. Slange. Glad Cheers. it's Cheers. Slange. Cheers.